So you're looking for a tent stove and you're trying to figure out how much money to spend. This is an expensive hot tent stove from Winterwell and this is a cheap no-name brand tent stove that I bought off of Temu. Couldn't even tell you what it's called. Let's break it down and see which one's worth your money. Gear up and get outside. So I paid $118 for this inexpensive tent stove on Timu. And actually I did a whole video on that if you wanna go watch it later. This doesn't have a name brand. I don't know what to call it. There were a bunch of different sellers of the same stove on Timu, and I've even seen what looks like the exact same stove on Amazon. I'll try to include links below to what I think is the same stove. This is the Winterwell Nomad View large stove. So this is a very nice high quality stove. While the list price on this stove is $499.99, I did get it for free. Winterwell sent this to me to try out and see how I like it. There were no strings attached, no content promised, and no money changed hands. So they are not a sponsor of the channel, but I did get this for free. I have noticed on Winterwell, their pricing is pretty consistent. They might go on sale occasionally, or you might get a discount buying direct from them online, but you're not gonna see a whole lot of fluctuation in that price point. This stove, however, I've seen priced all over the place. I've seen it as low as $100 and up to as much as $200. In fact, today when I looked up the current price of this from the same seller I got it from, it was $151. Let's set these up so we can talk about them. All right, now that we got these all set up, I will say they both are pretty easy to set up and go pretty similarly. They even have similar styles of feet. So now I wanna just talk about a few features. Neither of them are foldable stoves. So they are as big as you saw them in the beginning of the video when you store them. So they take up a little bit of space, but not an enormous amount. They can easily fit in a pickup or a car or on the shelf in your garage. They use rivets and not screws on these feet, which just means you're kind of stuck with what you got unless you want to pull those out someday and replace it with a screw. I've also noticed that over time, as these have gotten a bit dirty, it just is a little bit harder to pry open and close. Compare that to that Woodlander stove that just has excellent feet for a tent stove, and I wish they were all that way, but they're not. They're both very stable. You know, they stand up very stable on their own, but the Nomad is exceptionally stable. This stove pipe is a much larger diameter. It's a three and a half inch stove pipe. It doesn't blow around as much in the wind. And even if it does, you have guy line hooks at the top. This one doesn't have any natural place to attach guy lines. And it's just the pipe itself, and it's kind of flimsy. And the fitting down here at the base of the stove is pretty wobbly. Now, I didn't notice any smoke coming out from under there or anything like that when I used it, so it wasn't really a problem in that respect. But it's not as stable as this larger stove with, with a thicker, uh, larger diameter stove pipe. The Winterwell stoves come with a spark arrestor and a rain cap. That's very nice to have. That's also where you have the guy out points if you wanna stabilize your, your stove even more. But it has quarter inch mesh around the top, so that's gonna help contain large embers and things like that. Anytime you're in a dry environment, especially out west, it's just a good idea to have that it prevents you having any problems. It's even a good thing just to protect your tent because then you won't get any large embers that are gonna go right out the pipe and drop on your tent, potentially putting a hole in your tent. Now, some people might even want a finer mesh, an eighth of an inch or something like that, and that's a good idea too. On this cheap stove, there's no spark arrestor that comes with it. I plan to fashion some kind of spark arrestor and you can even just buy them off of Amazon that would probably fit that, you'd have to check. So uh, that's a downside of it, and that's another little thing you gotta spend money on later, so uh, take that for what it's worth. Both of these Tent stoves are very easy to use. There's really not that much to them. They're all mechanical and very simple. There are dampers. There's an airflow intake right here on this one. It twists. You have these little key rings with a coil around them that are supposed to help dissipate heat. But I'll tell you what, that is too hot. You pretty much always have to use gloves or a stick or something to touch the stove no matter where you're touching it. These are insufficient. Whereas on the Winterwell stove, these larger handles, I think are sufficient in most cases. This is where the damper is on the chimney pipe on the Winterwell, and it's in a similar location here on the smaller stove. But that too is just a little key ring totally insufficient, you're gonna need something to touch that with besides your fingers. When this is blaring hot, this twisty airflow vent does get pretty tight and can be kind of hard to move. Uh, it is fastened with a screw, so you could probably adjust that. I have noticed on both of these stoves when they were brand new that the first time you burn them, some of those nuts and bolts that are fastening things together get really, really tight. So you're gonna either need a little bit of lubrication or you're gonna wanna loosen them up just a tad. But maybe those were just mine. and Maybe they're not all that way. When you open the door on either one of these, you'll notice they both have what a lot of people call a false bottom or they have a grate on there. And that's what you're gonna build your fire on top of. The nice thing about that, it just helps your uh, fire burn more efficiently. And then especially if you're burning like kind of a dirtier wood or a soft wood that doesn't burn as clean as 
say a really dry hardwood, then you're gonna, a lot of your ash and stuff is gonna pile up on the bottom. It just keeps the airflow going even when you got gunk in there, right? And you got one of those in here too. It's very small and very simple in here. There's no ledges on the side. It's just that grate itself. And I don't know how long this grate is gonna last. I think it's gonna burn out in probably a year or two, but you know, for now it does the trick. And the truth of the matter is you could build a fire in there even without this, but it's kind of nice that it has this because a lot of the cheap stoves do not. And same for this one, you could use this or not. Even here, this is already starting to rust out at a, after about a year and a half of use. So um, I'm not gonna trust that to last forever. Perhaps the most obvious difference when you see these two tent stoves side by side is the build quality. As you would expect from a much more expensive stove, the fit, finish, and build quality on this winter well just feels so much nicer than that on this cheap stove. You've got a heavy duty stove here and a pretty light duty stove here. They both use 304 stainless steel. It might be corroding just a bit on that airflow vent. Not seeing any signs of corrosion on this one and I've used it a lot more for longer. The gauge of stainless steel used on the winter well is much greater than that on this cheap stove. This one is thicker both on the body and especially on the top. That does make this one lighter weight of course which is nice for carrying it around. One thing that that thicker steel does, especially on the cooktop, is that it will more evenly disperse the heat and hold the heat a little bit longer. So when you're cooking on this, it's a little bit more efficient than this thinner stove, which will have probably a really hot spot back here near the pipe and be quite a bit cooler up towards the front. You're gonna get some of that here too, but it will be more even, I would say. Overall, there's a big difference in durability, right? This one stands up to dents and dings way better. In fact, most stuff isn't going to dent or ding it. This one will easily take dents and dings. I'm doing pretty good so far, but even just bouncing around in the back of the truck or you drop it when you're carrying it to the tent, stuff like that is gonna put more damage on this than this. And that is especially true for the pipes because these flue pipes are very thin. They feel pretty cheap and they even deform a little bit into ovals on some of those fittings. It can be hard to get them in and out of each other during use. Now also these pipes will heat up really fast and really hot. You got to kind of be careful. They've, they've turned red hot on me which I wasn't super concerned because it wasn't for very long. That could even kind of deform the pipes a little bit more easily than this thicker gauge steel pipe on this winter well. All right we've covered a lot but let me summarize with some pros and cons. When it comes to the Nomad, some pros are that it's heavy duty, it's tough, and it's super durable. I expect this stove to last a lifetime. It burns for a long time and it's great for use with when I'm camping with my family in a large tent. You really notice the quality construction, fit, and finish compared to this cheaper stove. That cooktop is plenty large and it's very efficient at cooking. And if you camp in a spring bar tent, especially one of their hot tents like the Classic Jack 140 or the Skyliner, this one is a great fit because they sell it in a kit specifically made for that. So you have everything ready to go and you don't have to DIY anything. This winter well stove is also nice because there's a whole bunch of accessories you can get with it if you really want to geek out, including a water tank that will hang on the side on these two hooks here. I also have an oven for this that I purchased you can set right on top, but I could actually set it on this one here too. The view feature with this extra glass really lets out a lot of light and some extra radiant heat, which just feels really nice and makes for an awesome ambiance in the tent. Now this cheap stove I got off of Temu also has a lot of nice features about it. And one of the main things I like about it is that it has a decent value. Even though it's not as nice of materials or as thick or heavy duty as this winter well, it really fits the price point in my opinion. You feel like you're getting what you paid for. The functionality is there. This will do 60% of what this does. And, and there's plenty of scenarios where I wouldn't wanna use this big stove. I'd rather use this one. Overall, this stove does the job 60% of the time or more. And it's useful in a wide variety of hot tent situations and applications. Plus I like the lightweight and in my experience, it burns very efficiently. While everything might not be of the highest quality, it has all the necessary features for a decently functioning hot tent stove. Now how about the cons? One of the main cons of the Nomad stove is those legs. While they're functional and I like the height and it provides enough stability, the way they fold in and out is really annoying. It also has pretty sharp edges. I think I cut my finger on it once. I would recommend you wear gloves when you're using it. And I don't like how it's riveted. Now that it's dirty and been used a bit, it's really hard to get in and out. That's kind of a pain. I wish they used a similar mechanism to what they do on their Woodlander stove. So these aren't my favorite legs. It's also very heavy to lug around and move and transport and store. And because it's so big and bulky, I wouldn't use it for anything other than car camping. And even if I'm car camping solo, I'm less likely to take this. I'd probably prefer to take something smaller and simpler in a smaller tent altogether. So this is great for car camping with a family, but it's not great for a lot of other things. The other con to this is I think the price point may be a bit high for the added value you get of this over something like this. This costs five times as much money as this almost, but I don't know if you're getting five times as much value out of it. It is very nice, but if you're budget conscious or you're just getting going, then you might not want to start here. However, if you're a buy once, cry once kind of person, 
you probably won't regret it. Another minor con I've noticed on this is that these flue pipes get kind of pretty tricky to put together and take apart. So after you've used it a few times, it's going to require a lot of cleaning to keep that smooth going in and out. Otherwise, you get a lot of wobbling going on. And even right here, I can see it. It's not fully seated. So getting those pipes fully seated every time is difficult after you've used it a couple of times. So there's going to be some maintenance involved. I think that goes for any tent stove, but it's especially noticeable on this flue pipe. When it comes to the cheap Temo hot stove, I'm not convinced this is going to last forever. It's just not super thick. It's not super durable. I do think that this flue pipe is too thin. I'm not impressed by the materials. I don't love how it nests with the upper pipe going over the lower pipe. And I also don't like how those pipes are getting deformed very easily, even when it's pretty much brand new, turning into more of an oval, which just makes it really kind of a pain to get the different sections to fit together. I think that flue pipe especially is very prone to dents and dings and getting smashed in the vehicle or something like that. So I'm going to do my best to keep it stored inside the stove box here and you really got to have gloves or a stick anytime you want to make any adjustments on this whether you're opening the door or adjusting the dampers the little key rings on there are just insufficient to do it without some kind of protection from the heat for your hands that thinner metal is obviously less durable as well and that cooktop is less efficient you're going to get hot spots and cold spots and sometimes that thin metal can really get red hot and you got to just be careful of that because it's going to happen faster than it will with a stove with thicker metal i also don't like that they don't include a rain cap or a spark arrestor with this stove. I think that ought to be in every tent stove kit. So you're definitely going to want to add one of those whether you DIY something or you buy an aftermarket one. To sum things up, let's talk about some of the use cases for either one of these stoves. I think the Nomad is best for family camping in a large tent. It sits nice and low to the ground for a big stove, which is great for when you have people sleeping on the ground. I think this portable wood stove also would work well in a tiny house or maybe even a van or an old RV or a dry cabin or a yurt, some glamping situation. Now make sure you check the codes and make sure it's okay and do it safe and you gotta have everything vented properly and all that good stuff if you're gonna put it in some kind of semi-permanent installation like that. But this is something I could envision using in a situation like that, especially for some kind of bell tent in a glamping situation. Now I think this cheap little stove here is best for small to medium sized tents. I think it's very comfortable for up to four sleepers, even if you're in like a six man tent. Going over that, you might be looking for probably more real estate, more room inside the tent anyway. And if you're doing that, you might want a bigger stove. This works great in our 10 foot by 14 foot tent, but I think this smaller stove is still best for car camping. It's really not built for backpacking. It doesn't collapse down. It's a solid box all the time, but it makes it very convenient to set up and use and all those flue pipes store inside of it. So it's pretty self contained. All right, after all that, what do you think? Is it worth it? Is it worth it to pay 500 bucks for a nice stove like that? Or is a good value $100 stove good enough for you? Let me know in the comments. I'd be curious to hear what you have to say. What I'll say is that you get 60% of the functionality for 20% of the price with this little stove here. And I think that is a pretty good deal. It won't do everything that you might want to do with this one and vice versa. So you got to decide, do you want to buy once, cry once and get something very high end? Or are you good with something more value oriented that may not last your whole life, but if you're only in a occasional user or something like that, I think this is still a good fit. Either way, you can't really go wrong with either of these stoves, and there's plenty others out there like them. So these principles don't apply just to these two particular models. I think in general, you can look for some of these things I mentioned along the way in whatever tent stove you're shopping for or looking at. There's a lot of great ones out there from many different brands, and you should check them all out, do your own research, and figure out what's going to work best for you. Whatever you decide, if you're just getting into hot tenting, don't hesitate to start out small, and I encourage you to gear up and get outside.